How about you do this? Turn to your neighbor and say, good morning, you look great this morning. Come on, tell them that this Now turn to your other neighbor and say, hey, you look better than the first person. I just said, oh, no, no, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hey, this morning, this morning, this morning, I'm going to do something before I get into it. I know, I know, you know, they, they, I don't, I don't have to do this, this but, but I want to do this because I love our pastors so much. So you guys love your pastors. Yeah. 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 They're, they're people of integrity and they love the Lord, they love you, and so their heads down, down moving forward, ready to go. I just want to honor them this morning and thank them. I know, you know, it, you, you being, being on staff at, at various churches, you know, you, know, you don't always get the opportunity to step on a stage, and not that it's about that, but, but, when, but when you have a word from the Lord, or you feel like there's a calling on your life, life and when you, you have a pastor that just uh, believes in you and gives you the mic, it allows you to. To use, to use the gift that God has given you, I'm just so, so thankful for that, and my pastors, and, and, and all, all that I get to do alongside them, and, and, and the, the, the honor, honor that I have, and then to be behind me and Haley as we do the youth and young adults. So I just want to honor them. We love your pastors this morning. Yeah. 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 But hey, this morning as we jump in, I want you to be honest with me this morning. How many, How many of you would say, say that you're an impatient, impatient driver? driver? Come on, come on wait, wait a minute. Come, come on, on. I'm, I'm waiting too because I'm, I'm one. one. I'm, I'm one too. Like, like you're one of those drivers. drivers. Listen for a moment. You're one, one of those drivers. drivers, drivers, drivers like if someone cuts you off from traffic or is driving too slow, I'm talking to someone. For your if you're driving too slow for your liking, it frustrates you. And guess, and guess what? Sometimes, sometimes maybe you're one of those people who causes you to, 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 to think some not so, so great things about, about that person or to, to maybe say, say some things out loud in your car because, because, because you're, you're the only one in there and no one else is going to hear you because, because, you because of that person driving. And we, and we all know, know that those words, they, they come, or those thoughts, thoughts they come from a place of frustration, right? Are you with this this morning? Maybe, Maybe you're that driver that, that always critiques, critiques other people's driving. driving. How many of you guys do that? You're like, that person should not be turning that sharp, or that, that person should not turn that slow, or the, 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 the light, light has been green for five minutes. It feels like they haven't gone yet. They need, they need, they need to look up from their phone, don't go text, put it on silent, whatever it is. Quick story for you guys this morning. I was driving one day. And it, and it was one of those days where it just wasn't, wasn't a good day. day. How many of you guys ever had that before? You get in the car, you're tired, you're angry, whatever it is. It was already one of those one of those days. And all of a sudden, here comes this car in front of me. And I'm kind of on this road, and this car's in front of me. And this, this car is going so slow. How many of you guys have been behind people like that before? You're going so slow. I would ask how many of you guys are that person, but I don't want to call you out this morning, okay? But I was in this road, and it's a one-lane road. And, and Lord, you know, know that when you get on the one lane road sometimes, and, and there's other traffic coming so you can't get around, you know, you know that, that you're just stuck behind that person. And this person's going really slow. I've got cars behind me, tailing me because this other car isn't going any faster. They're going slower. There's a speed limit. Listen, Listen y'all, I'm saved and I love the Lord. But, but in those, those moments like that, I really got to pray, pray and ask God for forgiveness. Because, because if, if, I I don't, if, if I don't, if I don't ask for the Lord to be with me, the Lord knows that some things are going to happen and I'm going to say some things that aren't so good. But Listen, I would, it was one of those times I was so angry. I laid on my horn a couple of times. Some of you guys have ever done that. Be being real honest this morning with you. And finally, here's what happens. We made it to a two-lane road. Let's say praise God. Praise God. God. We made it to the two-lane road, and here's, here's what I do. Instead, instead of just zooming in and going past, I decide I'm going to go next to this person and see what the heck is going on. And then, then. So, so what I do, I'm going around, and I'm coming up next to them. As I creep up closer to them, I'm about to throw my hands up and see what's wrong. And they say, like, are you okay? Like, what's going on? And what do I see? It's an elderly lady with a handicap son. And you can tell, you can tell that she is afraid to drive. Okay. okay, maybe, maybe she, she was going, going to the doctor's appointment. Maybe, maybe she was doing, doing a grocery run or whatever, whatever it was. And I, and I realized, realized that in that, that moment I was judging someone before, before even knowing, knowing what, they what they may be going, be going through. You see, you see we, we sometimes, sometimes find ourselves in moments like that. Where, where we judge someone's actions or life choices 
when, when really, really we should, should be looking, looking at our heart instead. instead. We've got, We've got to understand, understand this this morning, and I want you to get this. this. If you take taking notes, I would, I would encourage you to take notes, notes this morning. And maybe, and maybe you'll leave this morning with something that you feel like can help you in this area that we're talking, we're talking about. about. But we've well, got, we got to understand that Jesus wants our focus to be on our spiritual, spiritual growth and relationship with him rather than judging others for theirs. For theirs. We've been, been in this series on the, on the Sermon on the Mount, called the Sermon on the Mount, you know, kind of play out words. But we've been in this We've been, been in this series for the past six weeks. How many of you guys have enjoyed this series? Come on, wait a minute. How many of you guys have been taking notes? Come on. You've been taking notes? Listen, there's been so much. You guys know, if you ran through this passage of Scripture, there is a lot to unpack. And so that's why it's taken. going to be eight weeks next week. And so, uh, but it's been good. It's been awesome. And we know that Jesus in this sermon in Matthew, he speaks on the Beatitudes and there's, There's so, so many great things to take, take away from, from this sermon series. series. So, so I can, I'd, I'd encourage you to look back over those notes, especially uh, students as you step into school and teachers as you go back. And uh, as, as parents, as you get your kids back to school and frustrations come and all these things. Man, think back on what we talked about these past seven, six weeks. And, and, and really let God uh, speak on your life and change the way that you think and the way that you act. If you, if you got, got your Bibles Bible with you this morning, uh, we're, we're going to continue this week in Matthew chapter 7. Uh, we're going to start in verse 1, Matthew chapter 7. I didn't put the whole thing up there, but where it's found is going to be on the screen. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 6. If you got it, say I got it. If you don't got it, say I don't got it. That's all right. Go catch up. Here we go. It says this, stop judging others, and you will not be judged. You guys, you guys hear that? the same thing, right? Stop, Stop judging, judging others and you will not be judged, for others will treat you as you treat them. Whatever, Whatever measure you use in judging others, it will be used to measure how you are judged. And why, and why worry, worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you, when you have, have a log in your own? How, how can you think of saying, let me help you get rid of the speck in your own eye, in your, in your eye, when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. It says that with an exclamation point. He wants, he wants you to hear it. Hear it. Hypocrite, first, first get rid of the law from your own eye. Then, then perhaps you will, you will see well, well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't, don't give what is holy to unholy people. Don't, don't give pearls to swine. They, they will trample the pearls, then turn, turn and attack you. you. Let's, Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, for this word. word. God, God, we, we thank you that we can come to your house. God, God, we, we can, can come in, in, we can be broken, and we can be hurt, and we can be struggling and frustrated. And God, we can hear words and things uh, that will allow us to understand how important it is to live a life for you. And so this morning, I pray, God, that you would speak clearly, I pray that you would be with us, and God, that you would be the focal point of everything that we do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. As we look at the Sermon on the Mount, we see these topics Jesus speaks about the most. All of them up to this point are about the inward life of a disciple, of a person that follows God. For example, he speaks on how we should give. Right? That comes from our heart. How do we give from our heart? He speaks about how we should love. We don't know how important that is. He speaks about uh, prayer and uh, fasting. Pastor Haley uh, uh, tackled that one last week and had lots of tackle, but it was so good and so deep. And, and all, and all those, those things up to this point really were having to do a lot with our inward decisions, our heart, our mind, how we're going to tackle those things, things from, from the inside. He then, then makes a transition in this, this passage to, to outward, outward things we as disciples, disciples of Jesus should, should focus, focus on. The, the inward, inward, listen, the, the inward, inward is very important. important. Right? We need, we need to, to check, check our hearts. We need to check our minds. What, what, what do we need, need to do in our, in our hearts to be a better person so that we can show Jesus on the outside? outside. What, what does the inside, inside look like? It's so important. Our decisions, our decisions we make and what our heart looks like is important, but it's, it's, it's not, not all there is when it comes to being a follower of Jesus. Right. It's, it's not, not just about, about the inside, inside, but it's also about how we treat people on the outside. Amen. God, God is very concerned about how we treat others. 
God, God is very concerned, concerned about how we treat others. others. What, is what is your attitude towards your neighbor look like? What is, what is your, your attitude, attitude towards your boss look like? like? How do you, how treat, you treat your coworkers? How do you treat your, your family? family? I, I, listen, listen, guys, guys I, I understand, understand this morning that there are frustrations we have, we have with people. Because, because you know what? People are dumb sometimes. Right? Can we be honest this morning? Can I use some crazy words like that this morning? I'm not going to go too crazy. But listen, listen, we know, we know that, that people make mistakes, mistakes and they frustrate us and they get on our nerves, but, but what we, what we have, have to understand is that, that we're all children, children of God. God. Yeah. And, and so, so if you're, you're a child, child of God and you know you have siblings, siblings, sometimes you fight. I tell the youth this sometimes. We're family. That doesn't mean that family doesn't, doesn't fight and we don't struggle and have things. things. But, but we're family. family. We're, we're there for each other. We treat each other right. And so, and so God, God is very concerned about, about how we treat others. others. I love this passage of the Sermon on the Mount because it's something I think every single one of us can learn from. We have we've all dealt, dealt with, with judgment in our, in our life. If, if we're being honest this morning, I really want you to be honest because, because I, I think, think when we're honest, honest it helps us to change. When we're, when we're not being honest, it's, it's hard for us to see the things that we need to change. And how, and how we need to change it. So, so this morning, be honest, honest we've all dealt with judgment in our life. We've all dealt with seeing the, the sinful nature of others. And instead, instead of saying we won't look, look at the sin or we won't think of them as just, just their sin or the wrong decision, we instead judge them based on their, their actions. As you, as you can tell, I'm trying to lay a, a picture for you of... of, 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 of just, just the, the things, things that we do as humans, humans towards others and the judgment that we that we give. And I promise it's not all just going to be like, this, this is what we do, and this is bad, and this is bad. I promise there's good that comes from, from this. Look at, Look at what this passage says in verse 3. And you guys have probably heard this verse before. It's something that many of us use. But it says this, and why worry about specking your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? You know, you know most of you in this room, you probably throw this verse around from time to two at some point, right? How many, How many guys, guys you got like an arsenal of verses that when someone comes at you, you're like, like whoop, yeah, flee, flee in the name of Jesus. Jesus I got to see you guys. Don't worry about, about the log in your eye. You got a speck in my eye, blah, blah, blah. You know, we've all got that arsenal of verses that we use. And this may be one of those that, 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 that maybe you pull out every once in a while, but... But how, but how many, many times have we been so quick to judge the action of others? When we, well, we need to take a look in the mirror because we have things we need, we need to, to focus on changing in our own lives. How many, how many guys, guys you, you get know, up in the morning and you look, look in the mirror and check out what's going on? How many guys, you guys sometimes you're like, I look good. Yeah, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm good this but a lot of times we look in the mirror. And, and the, the reason that we're checking in the mirror is because we know that we got some hair that's a little off. And we know that guys, our beard isn't maybe looking just right and on point. Or maybe, or maybe girls are looking more like, we need to make sure our makeup is perfect. Or, or our outfit is on fleek. I can't say that anymore. Is that a word anymore? I can't say that. Our outfit is, is whatever. It's good. It's amazing. It's fire, right? But they're like, like stop. 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 I can't say that, especially to a church. All right. But we look in the mirror because we want to see the things that we can change. But what, but what about, about when it comes to judging others? What about, about when, it, when we get, get into the rural world? world. Right, we're, we're not in our house, house anymore. anymore. We're in the rural world. world. There are, there are times, times in our life where we, where we need, need to look at that mirror instead, instead of, of looking at the world. What are, what the, are the things, things that, that I need to change so that, so that I, I can change, change the world? The world. That's, That's such a hypocritical way of thinking, right? Thinking that I'm going to judge others before I look in the mirror and see what needs to be changed. Wow, that's it's such a hypocritical way of thinking. Instead, Instead of, of judging someone else's wrongdoings, let's, let's focus, focus on changing ours. Man. Let, Let that, that be a challenge, challenge to you this morning. That, that because, because we're humans and we get, get angry with the, with the world, world and we see things that are so wrong, Instead, Instead of just jumping to, to judge, that we take a step back and look at what needs to be changed in our hearts. hearts. The beginning part. Of this, of this passage, passage starts, starts with a command, command that God gives us. And I read, I read it twice, so you guys better know it. It, it says, says, stop judging others, and we will not be judged. I think, I think this is a command we need to take seriously. I don't, I don't think, think God just says it at the beginning of this passage so that, so that he can just set something up. I think he says it because it's so important 
for us to understand it opens up everything in this part of Matthew that we're talking about, Matthew 7. We take so many other things more seriously than the things God tells us to do sometimes, right? Right? We take, we, take, we, 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 we take the fake news and the things, things that we don't even know if they're right more seriously than we take the things that God, the truth of the Word of God says, more seriously. We take daily routines more seriously than even the things that God asks us to do instead. We take the commands that God says to us to read our Word daily. To put, put him, him first. We put, we put those, those things behind us instead, instead of putting them in front, in front of us. God, God wants us to focus, focus on his commands. We need to take God's commands serious in our, in our life. life. Because, because what, what we do determines, determines how we grow. What, what you, you do determines how you grow. grow. So, so if you truly want to be followers of Jesus, you need to listen to the commands God has given you because they help you. To grow. to grow. We know, we know that, that the Word of God, God is, is a map, right? right? I remember in Sunday school, they'd always be like, it's a map. They'd be like, where's the map? They're like, like, you, gotta gotta the the you, gotta you gotta read the Word. You gotta read the map, right? right? To be able to know where to go. To be able to know how to grow, right? right? I read that. I didn't even need to. But listen, but listen this morning, you need, you need to understand that the Word of God helps you grow. And so there are things in God's Word that are commands that He gives us. Not because He wants to be a dictator, but because He loves you so much and cares so much about your life. And so it's time for us to stop playing around and begin to listen to what God is speaking and telling us to do. If you want to be a follower of Jesus, you can't break these commands. But I want to give you some ways this morning. I believe, I believe we often, often break these commands that God gives, gives us, gives gives us especially, especially the one we're talking about today. today. This, this may be stuff you're struggling with. And so, and so maybe you need to write it down, down and maybe you need to jot a star next to it and be like, this is something that I've dealt with. And I need, I need to try to understand and try, try to get better at in my life. So the, so the first one is this. We break this command when we think the worst of others. We break, we break this command when we think the worst of others. It's such an easy thing to do, right? It's, it's such an easy thing to do. Anything evil that's said about that person, listen, listen gossip, when someone comes up to you and they say, hey, so-and-so has been doing this, they've been sleeping around, they've been drinking, they've been going crazy, all this stuff. So what do we do instead of not listening to those things and trying to understand that they may be a struggling person? We just think of them as those things. We think, we think the worst of them. Of them. Anything, Anything they say or do, our, our mind goes to the, the worst. It's a, it's a person. person. I, I've been here before. I believe, I believe someone's probably high, high, but you hear, you hear something about someone, someone and then when they, they walk into the room, room you just, just keep thinking the worst of them. They went to go, you know, not the spill that happened in the back of your life. I'm like, right, they're just too many people see them. Or there's someone that came in and they were, they, they, they were setting up all the chairs in the right way. And you were like, oh, Pastor Ryan, he just oh, he set up your chairs all wrong. Uh, no, no, I'm just kidding. But, but hey, you're, 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 you're someone, someone that you, you break this command because you just think the worst of others. others. You, you made the decision in your mind that you're going to think the worst. So we break this command when we do that. Number, Number two, two, we break this command when we speak, we speak to others only about, about the things they, they do wrong. This, this is different, different than the first one. We speak, first, first we think the worst, the worst of them, right? right? But, but now, now we speak, speak it to them. them. You've, got You've got people in your life, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's family, maybe it's a, family, maybe it's a co-worker. Whoever, whoever it is, they live a very problematic lifestyle. Right? I'll just paint a picture for you. It's always you talk to them about the problems you have with them and with their life. Are you, Are you only speaking negative things about, about their life? Are you only, every time, every time you see that one family member, you know, you know that they have a drinking problem, problem or they have this or they have that, whatever it is, they come, they come to a family gathering and you're like, like have you gone to A yet? Have you given that up yet? Like, 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 oh, why'd you bring that girlfriend here that we don't like? Whatever it is, right? We only speak. The worst, the worst things, things over them. Only the things that we think they're doing wrong. wrong. And we, we break that command. When you when have, have that kind of attitude, attitude, toward, 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 attitude towards them, 
You're being, being judgmental. We got to call out how we see this morning. You're breaking, breaking God's, God's commands. commands. Number, Number three, three we break this command when we judge an entire life by its, by its worst moments. Right. Think, Think about, about some of the worst things, things you've done in your life. You know, I'm not saying out loud, but some of this is like, oh gosh. How would, How would you, you like your whole life to be judged by those things? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. I, I surely wouldn't. Would. <laughs> I, 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 don't I don't want, want people to judge me by those things. things. I want people, people to see my, my, my life, life be changed. That they they were where God, God has me now. now. And so even, even though, though the people that we're looking at and we're judging and we're, we're seeing, seeing the things that they've done wrong in their life, life, even though they may not have taken a step in the right direction, if we, if we continue to judge, to judge them based on those wrong doings, they're, they're never going to change. change. We do, we do that, that to others sometimes. sometimes. We judge their entire life by the, by the few worst things they've, they've done. done. And we're, and we're breaking, breaking the commandment that God has given us. Do not, do not, not judge. judge. Or you will be judged also in the same way. And so, and so we, don't we don't want to be judged. There, there's, there's many of us in this room who can flip the script, and a lot of us in this room we hate to be judged. We're tired of being judged. Being judged. But look at your, your life. life. Have, have you really made it the point in your life to not, to not look, look at people as, as their problems and as, as the things that they're struggling with, but instead look at them how Jesus sees them? And so you don't want to be judged. Don't, don't judge others. Don't, don't break, break the command that God has given us. Number, Number four, four, we also break this command when we judge others without, others without considering ourselves in the same, same circumstances. <laughs> we, we break, break the command God, God has given us when we judge others without being mindful that, that we also have to stand before a judge in heaven, heaven one day. When we, when we enter to the gates, gates of heaven, heaven and the, and the Lord, Lord looks at us. This, this is, is a deep moment. Have you, have you ever, ever really thought about this? I, I, I've thought about it a lot. Like, like, like what, what are you going to say to me? Are you, are you going to look, look at me? And are you going to open the book? And are you, you going to have, have a list that says he was joyful? He loved. He, he knew my son. He communed with him every day. Oh, oh but he's been judging, judging others for a long, long, long time. time. And he, and he knows, knows that, that he wasn't, wasn't supposed to, to but, he but he still did. did. We've got, We've got to think, think about that. Think, think of yourself in the same circumstances that you're, that you're putting, putting other people into. into. We, we break, break the command when we're, we're not mindful that we're, we're going to be judged as well. It's, it's important that we understand this commandment we need to take seriously from God. God. I, 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 think, I, I think I think because, because it opens up. This, this verse. verse. And, if, and you if you think about it, the first thing that someone says to you is oftentimes are those influential. And, and so when God, God opens up this passage and says this command, I think it's, it's important for us to look, look at, at it and understand, understand how serious we need, we need to, to take it. But that, but that brings, brings us back to, to verse 3 in this passage. passage. Why, Why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in yours? Think about this. This is going to mess some people up. We're, we're far more tolerant, tolerant of, our of our own sin, sin than we, we are of others. We're, we're far more tolerant of our own sin than we, than we are, are of others. How many, How many times have we been so, so quick to throw shame at others because, because of a sin that they committed? Without, without seeing how judgmental we're being or even worrying about, about the sins that, that, sin that, that we committed. We're, we're sinful, sinful people. It's, it's our nature. nature. But, but how many times... How many times have we looked at other people and we've we just, just been so furious with their sin, sin. But, but our sin is okay? It's quiet, quiet this morning because, because this is a tough message to, to preach. preach. I'll, I'll just be honest, honest with you. But, but it's something, something that we need to understand. We are, we are going, going to be people on fire, fire for God. Yeah. Relentless after, after him. him. Continually, daily wanting to be more like him. Then we, we have to look at every single area of our life and say, say what needs to change. Because, because if we don't, don't we're going to be lost in sin just like, just like the world. And what, and what does the Bible say? We're different, different from, from the world. We're not, we're not we're we're in, in the world, world, but we're not of the world. And so, and so we've, we've got to look at all these different things and, 
and just, just so happens, happens that judgment and hypocrisy are one of those things. And so, and so this morning, we've got we've to help. Help. We've we've be able, able to realize that, that our sin, sin needs, needs to be looked at before, before we begin to judge others, others for their sin. Think about, Think about the story in the Bible, in the Bible John chapter 8. eight. The, the Pharisees, Pharisees, they bring a woman to Jesus who was caught in the act of adultery. Some, Some of you guys, guys you know this story. story. Now, obviously, we know, we know that she sinned. She, she sinned, sinned before God. God. But, but instead of Jesus calling her out, what does he do? He calls out the judgment of the Pharisees. And this, and this is, is a verse that we've all heard. If you, if you have anybody here this morning. morning. It's, it's a verse, a uh, uh, John, John chapter 8, verse 7, that says, He who is without sin casts the first stone. He who is without sin casts the first stone. He does not look at the woman. Before, Before he looks at the Pharisees and say, you, you're wrong, you deserve, you deserve to die, die. You, deserve you deserve to be stoned to death. He looks, he looks at the Pharisees and says, why are we judging, judging this woman, woman when you know that you sin as well? We're, we're worried about the speck in someone else's eye when we've got, got a log in ours. We're worried about their sin when we've been, been living in sin also. Awesome. Jesus speaks to the fact that we're blind to our faults. And because, and because of, of that, that, we try to correct, correct the faults of others when we have some of the same faults ourselves. And because, because of our judgment toward others, others we as Christians, Christians have earned this label. You ready? ready? Hypocrites. We, we get angry with the, the world, world when they, they call us that, that but we we honestly most of the time have earned it. it. I, remember I remember all, all the time, time and people and preachers and pastors and friends are really like, don't be a hypocrite. Chris, they, they see us as Christians, we're just hypocrites. I would have people, people in school that would go to church, and, and they would be like, you're probably one of those hypocrite Christians, right? Like, you're in church, you're worshiping, you raise your hands, and then you got to school, you're cussing, you're doing all this thing. thing. We, we oftentimes did not earn the label hypocrite. We're living a sinful life, the same sinful life we see people in the world living. And we, and we somehow, somehow think, think that we're better, better because we go to church. Or because, or because we, we read our Bible, Bible a couple of times a week. Or because, or because we serve in our church. We're, we're being hypocrites, hypocrites and God's word warns against, against that kind of behavior. Judge not. Or you will be judged in the, in the same, same way. If, if we, we want to take labels off of us. Listen, listen the, the world is attacking Christians. We see it. They're attacking, They're attacking everybody. But we, but we know, know that as Christians, Christians the, world the world is attacking us. The enemy, the enemy is at large. He's, he's getting, getting in wherever, wherever he can to be able to turn people against Christians, Christians and to make, make us look like, like we're so, so such bad people. people. And can, can I tell you this? this? Yes, yes, the enemy is doing some damage, but can I tell you that we're doing some of this ourselves? We're standing up for things that we shouldn't even be doubting. We're, 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 we're sitting, sitting back. back. We, we should be moving, moving forward. Preaching the word. Yeah. Telling, telling others, others about the truth. truth. Yeah. And when, and we, when do we do those things, things we, we can't do them with the same simple nature that we're always doing with life. Because, because then, then we're labeled hypocrites. hypocrites. First, First we, we have to remove the plank from, from our own eye. And, and then, then we'll see clearly to remove the speck. From our, from our friends. friends. Jesus, Jesus isn't saying, saying that it's wrong, wrong to help, to help someone, someone else remove negative things or issues in their life. But, but not, not before dealing with the things that you're struggling with. Yeah. His, His message isn't, isn't to just, just sit back, back and allow, allow people to struggle. struggle. It's, it's not at all. It's not his nature. nature right? right? We, know we know that God calls us to go into the world. To tell to tell others, we know that God calls us to, to be loved, to be joy, and to, to tell, tell people what they're, what they're doing, doing is wrong sometimes. Yeah. But, if but if we're, we're doing, doing that, we're also, also taking around the sin, sin and judging, then we're, then we're getting, getting it all wrong. And so, and so God, God is, is he, he's, 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 he's really, really just warning us that, that listen, before you can have influence in someone's life, life, you need to make sure that you're right with me also. You need, you need to make, make sure, sure that you're dealing with the things that you're struggling with also. Look, look at, at what, what they need to change in your life before you look at you. Yeah. Take, Take an inventory. How many, How many guys, guys love you love to make lists? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. 
some pros, some cons. Some cons. This doesn't really have to be a pro con, but I would encourage you. What are, what are some, some things, things in your life that you feel, feel like you need to change? Not, not for, for worldly gratitude or any of that, that, but because that's the things, things that God needs to change. And maybe, and maybe you can put it up somewhere. somewhere. And you may, and you may never, never be able to mark it off fully because sin enters our heart. We know, you know we struggle, struggle with that, but maybe it's something that you just see, you know, okay, okay today, I need, I need to, try to try not to be judgmental towards those, those people that I see. Today, today you're like, like you're you're about to get in the car, you're about to drive, that story that I was telling you about, right? right? Okay, 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 I need to understand, understand that some people may not, not be as, as confident of a driver as I am, or as confident as I think I am of a driver. And so we need to make sure that that we, that we change, change some things in our life before we look to change others. others. So, so be slow to judge those around, around you, especially, especially because, because many people in your everyday life have no relationship with God. God. All, All the people, people many, many people that we come, come in contact with in our life have no relationship with God. God. So, so no one that wants you to ask yourself this. Will a judgmental attitude show who Jesus really is to that person? I love, I love questions. questions. Why? Why? Because they teach you things. Pastor Kyle, 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 in a lot of his lessons, he asks questions. Ask questions. I, try I try to ask questions, questions to you because, because I, I, want I want you to think about it. I want you to just, just hear words and it just, it just feels, feels like, like it's going, going wherever. wherever. Like, like, think, think about, about this for real. Will a judgmental attitude show Jesus was really is to that person? Take a step back at those moments of feeling like judgment is necessary and ask yourself that question. In this, in this moment, moment so and so wronged wrong me. Do I, do I need, need to judge them? them? Like, like, is it, is it right, right to do that? They've, They've heard me. Should I hurt them? them? Maybe, they Maybe they don't, don't have, have a relationship with God like I Maybe they're, they're just getting started. started. Maybe, Maybe they're just learning what, what it means, means to walk with God. God. So, so I've got to understand that that they need some grace. And I need to step back and think about what I say before I say it. If we, if we want to be, be like, like Jesus, Jesus, we have to do what Jesus tells us to do. To do. And so, so this whole verse, verse is he's laying it out. out. These, These are all commands from God. God. And so if we want to be like Jesus, Jesus we, have we have to do what he's, what he's telling, telling, us telling us to do. do. We, need we need to focus, focus on our own spiritual maturity, maturity and relationship with God, God. But, but also be prepared to give grace to others. Let's jump down to verse 6 of this passage. It says, do not, do not give what is holy to the dogs, dogs or cast your pearls, pearls before swine. They will, they will trample, trample them under your feet and turn and tear you into pieces. pieces. I like, I like this version better because I like it. It says, don't give what is holy to the dogs, right? That gives, that gives us a little, little bit better picture of what, what God, God is trying to say. After, After Jesus warns us about judgmental attitudes, about judgmental attitudes and judgmental attitudes, and judgmental attitudes, and judgmental attitudes he also, judgmental attitudes, attitudes, he also brings us to this word discernment. How many of you guys have heard that word before? We have, we have to discern, discern that there, there are some good things God has, God has given, given us that we shouldn't, shouldn't give to those who will receive it with anger or hate. Or don't, don't receive it at all. There, there are some things that God has given us, some good things that God has, has, has placed in your life, life. that there, there are, are some people that are, are not going to receive, receive it in the way that God wants them to receive it. I've got two big dogs at home. If you ever you see, see my dog, dog we've got a lot of lads, that's like 90 something pounds. pounds. We've we got a gold tree tree that's like 100 like something pounds. pounds. He's a fatty. Right? right? But, but what, what I've learned is that I can't give them those cute, fluffy, fluffy toys, toys that you buy from the pet store. store. They're, they're cute. cute. They're, 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 they're funny, funny, like, like the fake lace bag or whatever. You know, all these different things. I've done them before, okay? So I know. But I've learned that I can't give them those toys because after like five seconds, those, Those toys, toys are going to be absolutely destroyed. destroyed. My dog is going to play, play with them. Oh, you love these toys. toys. I know some of us have got them little dog. You can give them the little sweeter toys. toys. They're, they're, they're good. good. They're, they're like five years. years. My dog is done in five seconds. But there are some things God gives us to speak to our lives that we need to discern if they're meant to be given to others. There's some, There's some things in our life that we need to have, have discernment. God, God is, this is this a moment where everyone, everyone needs to hear what I have to say? Is this, is this a moment that everyone, everyone needs to hear the word that you're giving me? Or God, God are you speaking, speaking this to me because, because it's, it's for me. me? 
And so, and so that one word is just and it gets thrown around, around a lot. And, and, and we, we hear it a lot in the church, church world. But I think it's so important because God, God is a God, God of order. And we, and we know, know that. And so, so often times more than not, when God, God speaks a word to someone, someone it's, it's sometimes, sometimes for everyone. everyone. But there's many times, times where it's not. And so, and so we need to have discernment, especially when it, when it comes to speaking into the life of people outside of the, of the church, church, or people in our family, or the co-workers, or whoever, whoever it may be. There's some there's things, things God, God gives us or speaks to us, us that we need to discern if they're meant for, for other, other people. people. Don't, Don't give your dog something that they're going to destroy. destroy. Don't, Don't give, give them something good. good don't, don't give people, people something good, good that God has given, given to you, you only, only to come to find out that they want nothing, nothing to do with it, or that, or that they're, they're not going to receive it. The next, the next part of the verse says this, or cast your pearls before swine. swine. Mark 6, 16, 16 15 is such a very well-known verse. It says, it says this, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. How many of you guys have heard that before? It's such a great commandment from God. Such, such a powerful, powerful verse. verse. It also, also says this, though, in Acts 19.9. says, But when some became stubborn, rejecting his message, publicly, publicly speaking against the way, so Paul left and took, and took the believers with him. Jesus, Jesus doesn't say don't, don't ask for pearls before swine because, because he, doesn't he doesn't want us to share the gospel. gospel. That's, That's not, not the message. He wants, he wants us to have discernment. And he, and he encourages, encourages us to look, look for prepared hearts that are ready to receive his, his good news. news. Can, I Can I tell you this? That there are seeds, seeds of, the of the gospel planted, planted everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. We, we just, just need, need to have the eyes to see it and the, the voice, voice to speak to it. Where's the seeds come from? There, there, are, are, there, there are, are seeds planted, planted all around, around us. And when, and when I, I say, say this, this, I hope you understand. When I say, say that, that there, are there are things that you need to discern, some, some people aren't going to take messages, messages the right way. I don't, I don't say, say that in the, the fact, fact that we never need to speak about Jesus, Jesus and other people. people. That's, that's, not, not, that's, not, that's not what I'm saying. saying. What I'm saying, saying is this, that you have, you have to be very careful. Because what happens when we're building a relationship with God is oftentimes we feel like, man, I'm so excited. I want to tell everybody about Jesus. And then we go out and we, and we start telling people, and all, and all of a sudden, what they're, they're tearing us down about makes us backslide in our relationship with God. God. And, so and so we have to have discernment so that, so that we're not getting hurt in the process, in the process as well. Yeah. We, have we have to discern, discern what things God, God wants, wants to give to others. others. We also, we also have, have to understand, understand that there are seeds planted everywhere. everywhere. God, God is God is moving. No, no matter, matter the opposition of the world or of the enemy, we know, know that many of us, if we're being honest, honest in this room, room. We, have we have family members, members and we have friends that we've been praying for and interceding for, for that God, God would move in their, their life and, and flip, flip a switch, switch if you would, you would say in their lives and they would come to him. And, and so, so we know that the seeds of the gospel are planted just to see how our eyes to see it and a voice to speak to it. How do we do that? It's, it's called this son. God, God, there's this, this co-worker. He's, he's been coming into work. He's seen he a little, little off, but there's, there's been times where I've been, been able, able to just be friendly, friendly to him. I feel like, like I've got a connection. connection. Is, this Is this a person, person that, that, that I can take that next step, step and say, Jesus, Jesus used to see you to their life. Or, does it still be time? It's okay. I think, I think all the time we sometimes feel like, like we have to shove the gospel, gospel into people's faces. We feel like, like, like there's maybe that family member that they're, they're, they're so stubborn. stubborn. And you're like, like I, know, I know you know. know. We need to go to church. church. Grandma told us we were young. You know what the right thing is. But what do we do when we do that? We're not using discernment. We're being, being selfish, selfish and feeling, and feeling like, like they, they don't come to church, church it's on us. Or if they, they don't do it, right, it's on us. And so, and so we, we have, have to use discernment. The, the only way that we, that we can, can really 
overcome an attitude of judgment towards others, and also learn to discern moments in our life, is prayer. Verse 7 of this passage of Matthew says this. Very well known passage. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find it. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. It's not a coincidence that Jesus comes back from prayer in this passage after all that he's talking about in the earlier passages. It's not a coincidence that he comes back to this. And the, and the reason, reason is, is because prayer is, is important. Prayer, prayer is, is important. important. Yes, it is. If you're, if you're not, not praying, praying that God, God uses you, if you're, you're not praying, praying that God, God will give you discernment, start, start doing it now. Maybe, Maybe you've been dealing with your judgment attitude towards others. Can I encourage you to pray? Maybe you've been struggling with this word judgment. Can I encourage you to pray? We're quick, We're quick to judge the world, world but, but never quick to pray, to pray for you. And that's, that's a problem. That, that hurts. But it but also, also wakes me up. up. Because, because I, know I know that this world, world is going to fade. fade. I know that when God, God comes, comes back, back, I know many people are going to have to face, face a tough judgment, judgment from, from the Lord. Lord. So here's, so here's what, what encourages, encourages me the most when it, when comes, it comes to prayer. prayer. Is, that is that because, because the, the world is so horrible and it's struggling so hard because, because people are so lost, it lights a fire inside, inside of me that I need to pray, pray, no matter, no matter if, I if I see the person face to face, face, face or not, not I, need I need to pray, pray that, that God will bring somebody into that, that person's life, whether they're across the world or here right in my backyard. I need, I need to pray, pray that God, God will not bring judgment, judgment towards that person, towards that person and, and that they continue to go away. But, but I need, I need to pray that God will be people that love the Lord so much and care so much about people that they're, they're going to show, show love, love instead of judgment, judgment to those, those people. people. And God, and God I, also I also need to pray, pray that, that those, those people, people, when they, when they get in front of those others that I have never seen, that that one has to serve for the words to speak to their life. We're quick, We're quick to judge the world, but never quick to pray. Can, to pray. Pray. Can, Can we change, change that today? today? Can we Can change that today? today? Maybe, Maybe there are also so much you feel like, like you tried the best to share the love of Jesus with others. Maybe, Maybe it seems like, like a response, response more than, than not is you feel like, like there's an attack, attack when you do, you do that. that. Can, Can I encourage you to pray, pray for a mind and heart, heart of discernment from God? Would you, Would you say it this morning? All across, all across this room, if you can. Can And here's, here's what I want to ask you to do. I want to ask you to move this room out of your hands and close your eyes. And I want, I want you, you to do that because I want, I want you to think. think. In your, your, your own thoughts, thoughts, I want you to be distracted by the people around you, whatever is happening in front of you. With your hands bowed and your eyes closed, I want to ask you a question just a moment before I ask that. I want you to think about this. Maybe the reason you felt so judgmental about people and everything is because you never said yes to a real relationship with God. Maybe you're just this morning and the reason that you've this message is really late in your heart. I struggle with judgment towards others. And maybe the reason is because you've never said yes to Jesus. Did you know that when you ask Jesus into your life to start a relationship with him, that it actually starts a process of healing in your heart? So maybe you struggle with not just judgment, but maybe all these other things. Maybe, Maybe there's just going to hurt in your life. But when, but you, when you say yes, yes to Jesus, it starts a process of healing in your, in your heart. heart. So, so today, today, before we open these altars for prayer, prayer with, with every hand bowed and every eye closed, I'm looking look around this room. If, if you're, you're in the sound of my voice, 
you you say, say, I need a healing healing in my heart. heart. I need need Jesus. Jesus. I need a fresh fresh start. start. If that's that's you, you and you say say yes yes to a relationship relationship with with Jesus Jesus starting starting today, today. I'm going to ask you, would you just simply raise your hand and put it back there?